Okay, so this is just a quick run through on what's different with the new Agilix Buzz application. So specifically experience, what's it worth? Do you really want this nice licensed driver driving you around or is it better to take that experience and act upon it? Well, technically speaking, Agilix uh, got a do-over. So as in this our cartoon, you can't take a mulligan on your test. Well, in this case, what would you change if you could do it over again? So I think in this case, Agilix has had the opportunity to do over and we've done just that. We've rebuilt it from the ground up. So if you look at this query, it's searching for personalized learning and the date range um, is of a complete month, January 1 through January 31. And we got 62 hits and Clayton Christensen was at the top of that, which is interesting because he's been on our board of advisors for quite a while. What year do you think it was? Well, it was 2011, not all that long ago. And if you take a look at 2016 for the same January month, you can see it's gone to about 11,000 hits. And so when you talk about experience and you think about a do-over, um, a lot of the, the LMSs in the marketplace have not changed. They have not taken advantage of a do-over, yet they have continued to say they really understand personalized learning. And in fact, I don't think they do quite the way we have because we got a do-over. So let's walk through what this product looks like and how it functions. Okay, I'm going to sign in as a user and they come in a number, you know, whatever that user account has. I'm just going to show you real quick a couple of things and then you can go from there. So brand new rewrite on the admin tool. Um, you can look at all the settings that you have, the ability to modify avatars, bookmarks, editors, help links, uh, timeouts, um, guru, con, LTI, uh, multi-outcome scoring, lots of stuff going on here that's now considerably easier to set up and to work with. The rest of the admin app has been um, updated. It's on parity with Brain Honey with some additional functionality that's new to the mix, but it's very fast. It's all been written in Angular, so really good stuff there. Let me switch over to the teacher app for a second. Now, as far as the teacher app goes, you can see that I'm using TKC Buzz as my login prefix. And just to drive home the idea about a do-over, if I came into brainhoney.com, I can still absolutely log in with the same user account, the same teachers, same passwords, and you'll see that I get this list of courses that I had before. It would have been extremely difficult for me to take our existing product, as with our competition, and try and turn it into something that's really personalized. So rather than taking what we had and extending it, we simply said, let's leave that in the marketplace and go after something entirely new. And so what we've done here, I'm going to show you just a couple of things that are different, and then um, we can have certainly more time later on as we move along. But um, the performance page is very different. I'm going to choose a course to look at. Um, you have the gradebook as we've seen it in the past, and we've streamlined it in Angular as well, um, parity with what we were producing in Buzz before. However, some new things that are kind of interesting in that I can go ahead and select a series of students, and I can add those to what we call the clipboard, and then I'll get back with you in a second on looking at a couple of other things. But we've also added mastery based in here, unit summary, as well as for me activities so you can see what exactly the students have done that the teacher has assigned or items they've selected themselves. So we're looking a lot more at student choice and voice and intervention strategies for either remediation or acceleration. So there's some interesting things we can do here. We also added multi-outcome scoring. So if I came over to a different course, our home page for that performance page is going to look a little different because we're focused on outcomes rather than on grades for a particular assignment. You can see there's still lots of activities, but as I come in here a little bit further, you can see how those students are doing on any one of those master um, mastery-based outcome models. And so this is in case you can see that in written communication, they're not doing very well. Um, but Anyway, suffice it to say that this model then is made up of individual assignments that when you score them, instead of scoring them with a single score, you now can score them across as many of these outcome buckets as you need to. So there's a lot of states here in New England specifically that are doing um, uh, competency-based scoring, uh, multi-outcome scoring, and this approach works extremely well uh, for them. So again, new to the system, the way it's set up. The other nice thing is that 
we're now making it so that you can print all of this detail. Um, it's going to be a little bit difficult for SISs to keep up with the pace of personalized learning. And so we're making it so that most things can be printed uh, in order for the student to take things home. If I was looking at Charles and I wanted to add him to the mix, you can see I just picked up a third person. So let's talk briefly about what this clipboard does. This clipboard is um, really home base for a lot of the teacher activity that we need to do. And so I've, I've collected three students um, and those three students can then be grouped uh, very quickly into what what we, you know, maybe you need to work on them for a couple of weeks. Um, cool thing is that I can intervene by activity, badging, tasks, or messaging. And all of this has been updated. When you look at activities, I can do just a quick activity or I can look at what we call um, choice activities that have been vetted and so these I can simply grab one of these and add it to the assignment so these three kids are only going to see this and the rest of the kids in the class will not. Um, I can also go out and search the digital library and with the digital library we have a lot of flexibility here um, based upon open education resource content um, similar to Khan or Guru. Um, you can also have your own libraries in the mix um, certainly publisher libraries available to you as well but you can drive through this and then and either search um, search by text search by outcome search by collection types um, and let's just say math and I'm going to drill into third grade and I've found some items in here and found a few more there and then I grab this one and I'm going to add it you can see that it gets there and I can back up and just keep on looking for things that I want to add to the mix and when I do then I can go ahead and have these items now these items could then be assigned to just these three kids. You could make them gradable if you wanted to. You could set due dates or you could just simply assign them. And in this case, those four kids or three kids just picked up those four assignments. Same thing with badging. It's a leadership badge. Great job. And I'm off and running with badging. We support the Mosaic Badge API. So the evidence that you attach is available to um, openbadge.com, for instance. Any outside source that supports the Mosaic Badge API would be able to read our badges and see the evidence behind which those badges were granted. So badging, tasking, messaging, we've, we've redone messaging as well. So there's a lot of really good stuff in here. We've also given teachers a lot more capability to run their own reports, so they don't have to go back to the admin and do that. So there's gradebook reports, um, student reports, mastery-based reports. Um, like I said, we're redoing the calendar and you know the, the um, calendar and the messaging system and the people page that we talked about a little bit previously. If I flip this around to geometry, you can see that their score. We've, we're doing some new exit ticketing around understanding effort and interest, uh, which makes this really interesting because then I can I can grab kids that self-identify as being lost and flip it on its head and grab two kids that think they're expert, put them into a temporary group and, and task them with the assignment to meet after school, for instance. So lots of stuff going on here, lots of additional columns that I can turn on, um, really interesting things that can happen from the people page. Curriculum page has been updated some, we'll continue to update this. This is where you set the thumbnails, the landing page, the student task activities, which are pretty cool. You can also um, set up for instance, choice activities. So choice activities are activities that are available for students to, to use if they need additional um, uh, resources. So in this case, I could say they're all extra credit or I could actually require them to do X number of choice activities. I don't care which out of this list they do, they just have to do two. And I can open up the digital library. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that we've focused on around the ability to choose um, activities within the course as well as when I'm up at the top you'll see this for me activities student tasks that enable the students to do their own so outcome multi outcome scoring you can enable it or disable it. a lot of these things are set to be um, enabled or disabled so anyway I'm going to log out and uh, log in as a student real quick You can see on the student homepage it's been cleaned up some. You see their score. You see how far they're um, through the completion of the course. You have the to-do list over on the left-hand side that I can collapse if I need to. As you go into any one course, you have your stream, which you saw on the homepage as well. What's up next? Again, if I've got too many assignments, I can move them out. I can start navigating through the course. 
Some interesting things that happen inside the course that are a little bit different. Um, the check for understanding, effort, and interest. Um, very straightforward, very easy to do. Immediately updates that people page back on the teacher side. You also know exactly what outcomes you're working on and you can reconstruct these so that they're uh, more student friendly so the students understand what they're doing if you want that's entirely up to you uh, we're doing a lot around peer-to-peer -peer review um, and editing and communication and so these are students that have already completed this particular assignment so potentially I could talk to them beforehand uh, we talked a little bit about the idea of the for me task so this is where I just have a task I can put on this to-do list or I can actually submit it to the teacher and the teacher can use this for transferable skills. Maybe I did a summer internship or um, I submitted something for biology that I want to submit for English. And so the student has a lot more control. We're going to enhance this um, still even further to encompass some pretty cool, you know, teacher functionality that we think the student could help with. So more to come here on this. I think it's going to be a pretty exciting area that we that we work with. We also talked briefly about the idea of the, of the choice folders. So down here, if I click on those choice folders, you can see what they are. I can go ahead and click on them. If I like this, I can choose it or I can go back to the list. If I choose it, there's a garbage can that will get rid of it if I ultimately don't want it. And then, of course, the students can go out and search the open education content uh, to find stuff that they want to put into the course. So there's a lot more flexibility for the student to, to own some of their learning if, in fact, the district wants to turn that functionality on. Uh, when you look at the performance page, we've increased this as well. So if you look at all courses, you'll see that if I'm using any multi-outcome scoring, in this case, you can see I'm looking at oral, collaboration, agency, knowledge, and thinking. We're going to give you a dashboard that's drillable, that gives you more detail. The student can see this, and of course, we're shooting to print this as well. Um, so that it's uh, more easily shared with parents and others who need to see this. So this whole concept of bringing this together and how we score it and dashboard it is all um, going in the right direction. If we drill a little bit deeper, the student will have more information. They have their For Me activities that they've chosen either through the Choice folders or through the For Me activities. The What If calculators, the analytics, the badging, all of that detail is available for them to review and uh, they can go ahead and download that badge again like we talked about before. Um, the communication part of the puzzle, the, the scheduling, the tasks. So anyway, we've cleaned up this as well. It works really well on a full screen. I can, I can narrow this down. It's all responsive in design. So if I bring this down a little even smaller, we're going we're gonna to play really nicely on smaller devices uh, to make sure that um, we're encompassing as much as we can from the form factor standpoint. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this very quick run through. I'm really excited about our do over. We've taken the experience that we've learned, really understood the personalized learning space some, and um, created a product that fits that model. And instead of taking Brain Honey and trying to extend it, we'll leave Brain Honey where it is. And, and we've introduced Buzz into the marketplace for the personalized learning. Certainly, you can do sequential learning in here as well. But overall, um, it's a it's a do over, and I think we've um, really captured a lot of stuff that we needed to do, and it's being extremely well received in the marketplace. So we hope to do business with you. Thanks.